I've been up since 2.30, but I don't care. These are important headlines and I need to bring them to you. It is Friday and you know what that means? Actually, I don't know what that means for you. Maybe you work on Friday and if so, I'm really sorry. But it is my Friday. I've been up since 2.30 this morning. I anchored the morning news, but there's so much space news that I have to get these headlines to you today. So first let's talk about Starship. SpaceX has posted some interesting new job postings. Now in these job postings, SpaceX is clearly hinting at the unexpected desire to develop some marine recovery systems for the Starship program. Since SpaceX first began Starship development in late 2018, Elon Musk and the company have long maintained that both super heavy boosters and Starship upper stages would perform what are known as return to launch site landings. However, it's not clear anymore if those long stated plans are set in stone. And let's just take a look at these postings. They are looking for a marine engineer and a naval architect to work on this systems development. So if you know of anyone that could fit this job description, send it over to them and have them apply. Well, this is nuts. SpaceX is set to launch one rocket per week throughout the entire year. That's crazy. Of course, part of those launches will be delivering hundreds of Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. Now, this will be a remarkable milestone for SpaceX, building on the 31 launches that they had last year, carrying a combination of private and government payloads. And of course, we are all looking forward to the orbital launch that is set to happen sometime this spring. I'm crossing my fingers that I can be there in person for that. Let me know in the comments if you also plan to be there and make it happen basically no matter what. Of course, rocket reusability is the holy grail of rocketry and being able to reuse parts has significantly lowered the cost of launches. SpaceX is known for landing boosters, recovering nose cones and reusing them in future launches. This reduces the cost of each mission from the typical 60 to $90 million all the way down to about $30 million per trip. Take for example the Transporter 3 mission that saw Falcon 9 carry satellites for a number of smaller operators. They reused a booster for the 10th time in just 20 months. SpaceX's rideshare program allows corporations and governments to send a 200 kilogram payload into orbit for the relatively cheap price of $1 million. Compare that to a solo mission for about 50 million. And yes, seven years after its initial launch debris from a SpaceX rocket, is going to hit the moon. And check out this tweet from astronomer Jonathan McDowell. He says, for those asking, yes, an old Falcon 9 second stage left in high orbit in 2015 is going to hit the moon on March 4th. It's interesting, but not a big deal. So from a safety standpoint, it's really nothing to worry about. And Scott Manley replied to that tweet saying, hopefully there's a good before and after of the impact site. And that's really the silver lining if there is one in this crash into the moon. Knowing the exact trajectory of the rocket, the site of impact, and the time around it will land, astronomers will get a glimpse into what is below the surface of the moon in a way that they probably wouldn't with a random comet impact. Well, this isn't the first time space debris from SpaceX or SpaceX satellites have kind of caused some issues. The Chinese government filed a complaint last month after two close encounters with SpaceX satellites that forced China's space station to take evasive action to protect its Taikonauts. And of course, with more than 30,000 Starlink satellites planned for orbit in the coming years, the chance of a near miss or collision is raised. In other news, Toyota wants to go to the moon. The company announced plans to develop a lunar cruiser that would explore the moon. Toyota is teaming up with the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. They hope to launch the vehicle by 2030. Toyota says it wants to help people live on the moon by 2040, and they too have ambitions to make it to the red planet. Toyota still hasn't said how much they think this project will cost them. And check out this last story. Elon Musk tried to pay a teenager to shut down this Twitter account that tracks his private jet. I totally understand why he wouldn't want that information out there. And this teenager counter offered him 
and the account is still up, so no deal was made. But Elon Musk did reach out to the tech-savvy teenager back in November. He offered him five grand to shut down that account that tracks his private jet, and he's, of course, concerned about his personal safety. So he reached out to the college student, Jack Sweeney, to express concern about this and ask him to take it down. Well, they exchanged several messages. Elon pressed for details on how Sweeney set up the bots and what he earned by operating them. Eventually, Elon offered him five grand to delete the account. Sweeney counter offered 50 grand. And then Elon, for some reason, said it didn't feel right to pay him to shut it down, which clearly he obviously has the money to do this for whatever reason. It's still up. I can track you. I know exactly where you live, Oli. Oliver, I'm watching you. You know, it's really a shame he can't be an outdoor cat. It's just not safe here. Sorry, bud. But I just checked the Twitter, Elon Musk's jet. He landed in Austin, Texas two days ago. I can see that on my phone. So I totally understand why he wouldn't want that information as public knowledge. I mean, I myself, I work in TV news. I'm clearly on YouTube. Hi guys. Um, and so, you know, we get some weird fans sometimes. So I totally get it. However, I just, it just occurred to me that, you know, I've been trying to track down Elon for an interview. So maybe this account works in my favor. Of course, not going to do anything creepy, but that is on my bucket list to talk to Elon sometime for the channel. So hopefully if you guys stick around long enough, that will happen on this channel. I'm manifesting it. I'm putting it out there into the universe. I have faith. So even though I've been up for long, way too long now, I really wanted to make this video and get these headlines out to you. A lot of stuff going on in the world of space. In fact, it's kind of funny, uh, you know, during our actual broadcasts for TV news, we've been incorporating a lot of space stories recently. And I think it just really goes to show that this is not just like a niche thing here on YouTube. This is really like making mainstream headlines, more people are taking interest. And I just think it's a wonderful thing to see. So if you are all about that, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And by the way, um, I am very close to meeting Scott Manley. I'm less than two days away from that. So hopping on a plane tomorrow, I'll be shooting a video with him on Sunday. I'm super excited. He tells me that he dug out some cool knickknacks. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys have seen his studio, so it'll be cool to kind of talk about, you know, his background and how he got so big on YouTube. I have a video about that, but we're gonna go for the full in-depth version of this story. That's one of the things that I love about YouTube is being able to have however much time I need to tell a complete story. That's one of the difficulties um, in my day job is, you know, we don't get a lot of time and I feel like people value, you know, really listening to long form interviews. So I'm really excited to bring you whatever we come up with while we're there and I will see you guys soon. Have a great weekend. To develop marine recovery to develop marine recovery systems Jesus Christ No don't I'll wait I'll wait because he's scratching the cat box Stop it stop being a cat That's rude of me I'm sorry Take a look at these postings they're looking for a marine Stop it! Stop. In other news, 